next door to the Mungrel Mob headquarters was burnt to a shell. He was rushed to Hawke's Bay Hospital with gunshot wounds to his lower back and his stomach. Follows the arrest of four Mungrel Mob members in connection with Thursday's torching. <laughs> My name is Martika Brent. I'm also known as Mad Marty 13 or Skin Dog. I'm one of the founding members of Mighty Mungo Mob Aotearoa. And on my head, I have tattooed Mighty Mungo Mob Aotearoa Seek Fucking Hill. My patch to me, it's my heart, my soul. The mob symbolised freedom, pure freedom. It's like the Wild West, there was no law really to us. You could do what you like back in those days, anything then. And it was just a adrenaline rush even without the alcohol, drugs, uh, the wars with the other gangs, e everything, you know, it was just excitement. And there was girls, a different girl every day. Girls loved the mob. Mongrel mob life to me was, was freedom. My upbringing in Christchurch was very strict. Because of my strict life, I was seeking attention. I'd do things to seek attention. You know, nothing overly bad. I started off by smoking cigars in the class, putting rubber stones over teachers' heads, took a teacher's car, crashed it in the river outside the school. And uh, my mother had me committed to a psychiatric unit and put on about 30 odd pills a day. I didn't like the drugs that they were giving me. They were doing things to my head and I refused to take them. What happened, uh, I escaped from Sunnyside. I took one of their cars. I'd never driven a manual car and I had these little racing overalls on or something. And it was a police chase through Christchurch. I could hardly see over the steering wheel. So I was short at that age. They set up roadblocks. I'd just go on the footpath about uh, 60 mile an hour. By the time I'd just turned 16, I was living on the streets, eating out of rubber stins, stripping for celebrities for money. Then uh, actually joined the mob, and mob were uh, just like whānau to me. True family, everything was more real. Back in my day, being a Pākehā, it wasn't the easiest thing in the mob. Most chapters only had one Pākehā member or maybe two or none. It was by then I loved the Māori people. The Māori people, I found to me, had soul, whereas the most Pākehā people I'd met had no soul. The Māori people were so full of, of, of soul and heart. In my mid-twenties, I was a law unto myself. I did what I wanted. I respected no one else. I'd walk into other gangs' pubs. I'd walk into their pads. Usually I'd wake up in hospital wondering what happened, but I would just do anything. I wanted to die so many times, but it never sort of happened. I was always saved in one way or another. I started racing in the 70s at a speedway down south and a couple of the mob grabbed a couple of cars too. My children and bringing up my children, I'd have to say, saved me as a person. So I've raised four of my own children, plus another six from welfare by myself. I stopped everything else 
right, my business, speedway, everything, so I can concentrate. That was my life, bringing them up, my main focus. I got that used to it. I started looking after other children. Children really teach us so much that we don't even realise it sometimes. I remember I thought to myself, how am I going to do this? I've never done anything like this before. The hardest thing was I'd never cried before, I'd never hugged, I'd, I'd never loved. I had to learn how to hug them, I had to learn how to love them, which they taught me how to do. That, that was the hardest thing, coming from where I was in the mob and doing what I did in the mob to doing that. That, that was the, uh, the hardest thing to learn. So it was hard because they always wanted to cuddle me and I was cutting them and I wasn't feeling anything at first and I didn't know how to because I've never had those feelings before because I'd never been hugged or cuddled, you know. I was like an iceberg, a solid rock. I remember when the Lion King first came out and we were watching it and uh, I actually cried, you know. And then I realised, geez, my kids are uh, actually changing me. I sat there and cried watching a bloody movie. I couldn't believe it. You know, oh my God, what's happening to me? And then I realised I'm becoming a real person. All that armour is being stripped away. I finally got a heart. See, man, he used to live by fighting. Would always take on more than one person. Didn't care if he got a hiding, walking into other gangs, pubs and that. No fear, no fear whatsoever. And then his children can melt him like that. You know, that's, that's, that's powerful. It's real powerful. journey of bringing up the children was just an amazing discovery of myself. I was, I'm really crying out talking about it to you. <laughs>